Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna to work together to find the derivative of our inverse tangent function or our arctangent function. Before we start finding that derivative, let's have a quick little discussion about uh, what the inverse tangent function is doing. So just like all of our inverse functions, it's undoing what the original function does. In green over here, I have the graph of our original tangent function, right? And I actually restricted the domain of our tangent function to that interval that makes it one-to-one, -one, just like how we had to do for our inverse sine function. And now if we reflect the graph of tangent over the line y equals x, we get the graph of our inverse tangent function. And that reflection process is really what causes the domain and range to switch. So now looking at the graph of our inverse tangent function, we can see its domain is all real numbers since that was the range of our tangent function. And the range of our tangent inverse function is well the domain, that restricted domain of our tangent function. So our tangent inverse function is only ever gonna spit out values between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. What we can also see from the graph of our inverse tangent function is as we move from left to right, the graph is always going up. So it is an increasing function. So our derivative should represent that. It should always be positive. So let's go ahead and start finding the derivative of our inverse tangent function. And we're gonna use that basically same exact process as we used for our sine inverse function. And we start that by rewriting the equation without tangent inverse involved. So we're gonna assume that the output of our inverse tangent function is some number, some quantity, maybe we'll call it y. So let y be the angle that would come out of our tangent inverse function. Then by the definition of tangent inverse, we know that if we take tangent of our angle y, then we're just gonna get that number x out. But now we can differentiate this form of our equation. So let's go ahead and do that as our next step. So we're just differentiating both sides with respect to x. For the left-hand side, we're gonna to have to use our chain rule. The chain rule says, take the derivative of your outer function. So we start by taking the derivative of our tangent function, which gives us our secant squared function. Remember, we have to evaluate the derivative of our outer function at that original inner function. And our inner function is y in this case. And then we have to multiply the derivative of our outer function evaluated at the inner function by the derivative of the inner function. That's what the chain rule process says to do. And the derivative of our inner function is just y prime, at least for now. But we know what y prime is representing. y prime is representing the derivative we are seeking, the derivative of our inverse tangent function. So we can't forget to differentiate the right-hand side as well. The derivative of x with respect to x is just one. So now, just like in our sine inverse video, we have to solve for y prime here to get the derivative we want. And so to do that in this case, we now have to divide both sides by secant squared of y. So y prime, we can write as one over secant squared of y. But now we're in that same issue we saw in our sine inverse video. We have the derivative we want, but it's not expressed in terms of x. To help us express our derivative in terms of x, we're gonna have to use either some identities or some right triangle trig. All right, so let's go ahead and use some right triangle trigonometry to express secant squared of y in terms of x. And to help us do that, we're gonna have to come back to this relationship between tangent of y and x, right? If tangent of y is equal to x, then we know that there exists some right triangle with an angle y involved, such that if we took tangent of that angle y, the ratio of our side lengths for that tangent ratio would give us x. So remember, tangent is the opposite over adjacent ratio. So we wanna think of x as the ratio coming from the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. So if we make our opposite side length x and our adjacent side length one, then this right triangle will be set up in such a way that tangent of y is equal to x. Quick little side note, you don't actually have to choose x and one, but I always recommend making your denominator one. If you just have like a single variable involved, 
We could have made this like 2x and 2. As long as the ratio always simplifies to just x, you set up your triangle correctly. All right, so now we want to find secant of our, uh, our angle y. But we can also remember what is secant. It's the reciprocal of cosine. And that just might be a little bit easier for us to find because what is our cosine ratio? Going back to right triangle trig or SOHCAHTOA, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have our adjacent side length here. And well, here's our hypotenuse, but we haven't found it yet. So let's go ahead and take a second to find that. We're gonna find that hypotenuse's value in terms of x just using the Pythagorean identity, right? We know this side length squared plus this side length squared is gonna give us the hypotenuse squared. So one squared plus x squared gives us the square of our hypotenuse. The hypotenuse itself is gonna be the square root of one plus x squared. So now that we know how to express that hypotenuse in terms of x, we can go back down here and express cosine squared of y in terms of x. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but we have cosine squared. So we're gonna have one squared, which is just one, over the square root of one plus x squared, squared, which just cancels out that square root. So our derivative y prime is nothing more than one over one plus x squared. And don't forget this whole time, y prime is just the derivative of inverse tangent. So now we've proven and have this shortcut that says the derivative of tangent inverse of x is equivalent to one over one plus x squared. And look at this formula, it's always positive, right? The numerator is always positive, the denominator is always positive. So our derivative is always positive, which means our function should always be increasing. If we look at the function that this is the derivative of, it's the derivative of our inverse tangent function, that is always an increasing function. So that matches up with our result. We're trying to find the derivative of tangent inverse of e to the x. So here we have a composition of functions, right? We have our natural exponential function plugged into our inverse tangent function. And whenever we're interested in taking the derivative of a composition, we're gonna have to use our chain rule. So the first thing we wanna do to set up our chain rule is identify the outer and inner function. So in this case, our outer function is our tangent inverse function. And our inner function is our natural exponential function. So just like our product rule and our quotient rule, in order to find the derivative of a composition of two functions, we're gonna need four pieces, the two original functions, as well as the derivatives of the two original functions. So the derivative of tangent inverse, we just found in our earlier video to be one over one plus x squared. And the derivative of e to the x, we also found in an earlier video that was that really special function that is equal to its own derivative. Okay, so now we have the four pieces we need to use our chain rule, but let's maybe remind ourselves of what the chain rule formula is before we start plugging things into it. So the chain rule formula says, if you wanna differentiate with respect to x, a composition of two functions, f of g of x, you can do that, you can write that derivative in terms of these four pieces we have. It's the derivative of the outer function, evaluated at the inner function, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function or the derivative of the inside. So now we have our f, f prime, g, and g prime. So we can go ahead and start putting these pieces together. So the derivative of our tangent inverse of e to the x function, at least initially, is going to look like, well, the derivative of our outer function is 1 over 1 plus x squared, or its input squared, but its input is not x. Its input is g of x, which is e to the x. So we get 1 over 1 plus e to the x squared, right, remember our input was e to the x here, that's our g of x function, and then we have to multiply this by g prime of x, 
What is g prime of x? It's also e to the x. So this technically is our derivative. We have found it. The last thing we can do is just clean our formula up a little bit and simplify it. Right? We can think of that second factor of e to the x as e to the x over 1. And now we can multiply these two fractions together. Just write as a single fraction, really, with a numerator of e to the x. And the denominator really is 1 plus e to the x squared. But we can rewrite that using some properties of exponents. e to the x, that quantity squared, is the same as e to the 2x. This is that situation where we multiply those exponents together. So using the chain rule, we pretty quickly were able to find the derivative of this complicated function. The derivative of tangent inverse of e to the x is e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x.